Welcome to Brad Allen Drums. Today's lesson is the second part in a series about how to read drum sheet music. In the last video, I started with the basics, and today I'm going to expand those ideas and also show you some tips for writing your own drum charts, beats, and ideas. By the way, stick around to the end of the video and I've got a bonus for you. So for those of you who are new, my name is Brad Allen and I'm a professional drummer who's also been teaching private drum lessons for over 20 years and now I'm doing my best to pass along all that knowledge to you. By the way, this video is intended to supplement the lesson on my website at bradallendrums.com. So to follow along, you'll want to click over to the site and I've got all the examples I'm going to talk about written out there for you. Just click on the link in the video or in the notes below. Section two, eighth notes. In the last section, I mentioned that four, four time literally means four fourths or four quarter notes. There are four quarter notes in one measure of four, four time. If we divide each quarter note into two equal parts, those are eighth notes. So in a measure of four, four time, there are eight eighth notes, two for every count in the measure. We count eighth notes like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. For the next exercise, we'll move the eighth notes to the drum set. The first measure starts with a crash cymbal on one. The crash is usually notated above the hi-hat and ride cymbal on an extra line. This is called a ledger line. Again, you may see a slight variation on some drum sheet music. This isn't completely standardized. We continue the measure playing eighth notes on the hi-hat, the bass drum's on one and three, and the snare drum is on two and four. The second measure is a drum fill. It starts on the snare drum, moves to the small tom, back to the snare, and ends on the floor tom. The small tom is usually written on the top space, and the floor tom is usually written on the second space from the bottom above the bass drum. So here's how you play this exercise. One and two and three and four and... One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Section three repeats in shorthand symbols. In the previous example, notice the two small dots and the two vertical lines at the end of the exercise. That's called a repeat sign. It just means play everything again from the beginning. The first way of saving time writing charts and transcriptions is to use repeat signs. This avoids the need to write out the same thing twice. The next example demonstrates a one measure repeat. The first measure is a basic rock beat. The next three measures all contain a one measure repeat sign. So we play the beat a total of four times. Again, this keeps you from having to write the same thing four times when creating a drum transcription or a drum chart. So you just play it like this. One, two, three, and Four and two and two and three and two. Three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. Number three, this is an example of slash notation. Each slash represents one count, one quarter note. Slash notation tells you to continue to play something similar to what you just played. So in this case, you keep playing a similar rock beat, although it doesn't have to be exactly the same as what you were playing. It can vary somewhat. If the beat you were playing was a shuffle, you'd continue playing a similar shuffle, etc. Notice that above count four, it says fill. You need to play some type of fill on count four, but it doesn't specify an exact fill, just that it's exactly one count on count four. It could be a different fill every time, which is how most drummers would actually play a song in live performance. A drum transcription notates exactly what was played by a drummer on a recording. A drum chart is more of a guide. There's more room for improvisation with a drum chart. Okay, so the way you'd play this, just real simple. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Maybe a different fill the next time. Two, two, three, four. Etc. When writing drum charts as well as some transcriptions, it's common to use multiple shorthand methods. So you might notate a couple of measures with slashes, a couple with a one measure repeats, and a whole section of a song with a repeat sign. This saves time writing and it's also easier to read. 
That concludes this lesson. In the next video, we'll talk about 16th notes. I'll also show you some other drum chart writing tips. Now for the bonus I mentioned earlier. As a thank you for watching today, I have a gift I'd like to send you. I have 10 of the best exercises for speed that I've created, and these are the same type of exercises that helped my student Matthew Lom win a fastest hands drumming competition two years in a row. Just follow the link in the video or in the comments below, and we'll see you for the next video.